good morning good morning good morning to god be the glory for all that he has done for all that he is doing go ahead i see some people tagging already go ahead and tag this episode go ahead and share this episode i pray that you all got rest on yesterday on last night since we did not meet i hope you had spent time with your family well thank you tracy i hope you spent time with your family um i rested i got home early i just took time to just relax i'm still fasting we are on day eight i have to look down we are on day 18 of our 21 day fast and god has been moving god has been blessing god has been speaking i am excited about everything genera that god is doing in your life i'm excited about the miracles i'm excited about the signs i'm excited about the wonders god is doing something great in this season in this last quarter in these last couple of months god is doing a great thing oh my god and in fact this morning when i was in my devotion at 4 a.m i happen to be you know of course you praying you had got your eyes closed good morning jacqueline you have your eyes closed you're worshiping you're in in that realm of god and i happen to open my eyes because i've shared with you all many times before whenever most times when i fast i don't dream like dream in my sleep i actually see i have open eye vision so this morning when i was in prayer i happened to see like i opened my eyes and i just saw a hand just like turning 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 i'm just sitting there looking like huh and then the holy spirit began to tell me he said that is god turning he said tell my sons tell my daughters this morning i am turning it in your favor i am turning it for your good he is okay <laughs> you got to understand that in this season no matter what it looks like god is turning it oh god he says i'm turning it in your favor he said did i not tell you all that the king's heart is in my hand oh god he said and i turn it whichever way i want it to go drop in that see some of y'all already in the vein this morning drop in that chat he's turning it he's turning it he's turning it. but watch this you got it jackie not only is he turning it but he's turning it in your favor it's gonna work out for your good it's going to work out for your good what the devil meant for evil oh god god says tell him i'm turning it this morning i'm he says sit back listen to his instructions he said sit back and watch me turn it he says sit back and watch me move it in your favor sit back and watch me make what what you thought was a bad thing become the biggest blessing in your life he said watch me turn it oh god he says i'm turning it daughter i'm turning it son i'm turning it in your favor he says the enemy right now is strapped is scratching his head because he don't understand after all i tried i still failed after all i sent i still failed after all i sent to distract them they still praying after all i sent to get them off target they still giving god glory god said this morning no matter what it looks like i am turning it whatever your it is he turned it <laughs> oh god whatever your it is he is turning it okay okay let, let, let me just go ahead because i feel i feel i feel something different this morning listen he says whatever situation you okay holy spirit he inhabits the praises of his people oh god he says so tell them if they can praise me while they in it i get inside their praise with them inhabit means to dwell in inhabit means to get in it with you remember we talked about the hebrew boys in that fiery furnace and how they looked around there was another man there he said that's what i'm doing this morning i'm in it with you and if i'm in it with you i'm gonna turn it he said remember i told y'all i am like a refiner's fire in malachi he's i am a refiner's fire and full of soap what does that mean i control the fire i control the heat so whatever you in i'm in it with you oh lord oh lord i am in it with you he says so therefore i can turn it whichever way i want it to go and didn't i say all things gonna work oh holy spirit working this morning he says did i not say to all 31 of y'all this morning all things gonna work together for your good if i got you in it i'm controlling it i am in control mm, god that's the word this morning i am in control oh lordy 
when you turn it over to him, here we go. So, cause you know, we always have an obligation when it comes to the prophetic. He speak what you gonna do. He speak, he required you to do some things. He says, will you grant me access? Will you allow me to be in control? Will you allow me to take control? Because what? Okay. I don't even know who this is for this morning because this has nothing to do with the, the um scripture for the day. He says, but will you allow me to be in control of that situation? That means I need you to take your hands off. That means I need you to go in it with full faith. Oh God. I need you to go in it with full faith that my daddy can, that my daddy will. Oh God. Remember he said, because I am the king of kings and I'm the Lord of lords, I step into the situation. Not that I look at it from the outside. I'm in it with you. Mm. He said, so if I'm in it with you, what make you think you're going to lose? He said, you're going to win. He told us last week, <clears throat> you're going to win if I have to carry you across the finish line. But you need, yep, Penny, yep, Emily, y'all got it. But you need full faith. Oh, Lordy. You need full, listen to these words. You need full faith. Let that man that wavers ask me for nothing. For a double-minded man, oh God, is unstable in all his ways. Do you believe him or not? Hmm. Do you believe him to be the God that can? Do you believe him to be the God that will? Do you believe him to be the way maker, the miracle? He will step, listen. I have seen God step in courtrooms. People have had me to pray for different situations. I have seen God step in courtrooms and the judge just throw the whole thing out. Listen. <laughs> do you believe he can do you believe that he will oh god according to your faith according to your faith we've been talking about that all week but what i love about this 21 day fast is he's showing us if you go back and you look at all the teachings all the prophetic that he has given us over the last 18 days he's showing us i'm with you i never leave you i'm not gonna forsake you i got you in this He's been saying that over and over and over again. But do you believe that? Oh, Lordy, do you believe it? Because for some reason this morning, he's on it. He, he's, he's speaking about your faith. He says, because my ability to perform is never on, on the line. Oh, God, listen to this this morning. Holy Spirit says, our father's ability to perform is never on the line. Your faith is. Uh oh. He said, because I'm king of king and Lord of lords, I don't lose battles. I can do anything. The only thing I can't do is fail. Whoa. -oh. The only thing I cannot do is fail. He says, what are you talking about? If I orchestrate a situation, listen to this. If I, or if I orchestrate a situation, if I call you my, my Job, Satan, have you tried Job? He says, so that means I initiated it. <laughs> God started all that. Put Job in that situation, was in it with him all the way through it. Job's faith kept going. It wavered a little bit. Then it went back. No, I know my God. If he don't deliver, don't mean he not God. If he, if he don't do nothing else, he already done it. Job's faith did not waver. It, it wavered some, but towards the end, he got it together because God had to check him. I need to teach on that again. Where Job check, check, where God checked Job and said, wait a minute, who are you? <laughs> Who are you to even question? So God had to check Job and Job got himself together real quick because God had let him know, oh, I put you in there. And you don't think if I put you in and you think I can bring you out of it? Don't you understand Job is going to work for my good? Don't you understand Job? I'm you going to get the victory, but I'm going to get the glory. We know the story of Job. He ended up with 10 times, 10 times more than he ever had. Listen, he says, when I'm in it with you, you're going to win. Will you allow me? Uh-oh. Will you allow me to be in it with you? Drop that in the chat. Will you allow God to be in it with you? Or are you going to keep trying to handle it? Are you going to keep trying to fight it? Are you going to keep on trying to, I know how to make a way out of no way. I know how to do. Are you going to keep doing that? He says, or are you going to allow me to be God in it? Hmm. Oh God, are you going to allow me to be God in it? Watch this. I, I, I don't know why my daddy just came across my mind, but I remember, I remember when my daddy, because many of y'all know the story, my daddy, me and my daddy, you know, we like, was like, are like, we are like this. Um, my dad passed away with pancreatic cancer and, and he was diagnosed in March of 2017. Watch this. Diagnosed said he was going to have a few months to live. 
I would not allow them to speak that to him. My dad never knew that, but I knew it. Watch this. So after they diagnosed him, I went in the room. I said, dad, do you want to fight? Because we got to find out about stage four cancer when he thought he had polyps or something, but they found out he had stage four pancreatic cancer. So my dad, I, I didn't let the doctors tell my dad that, but I just knew the way they were looking, something wasn't right. So they told me, and then I went in the room. I said, daddy, do you want to fight? He said, yeah, baby, I want to fight. I said, well, you, I said, if you ready to fight, I'm ready to fight. We got this. They gave my dad a couple months. He lasted for two years. Watch this. He lasted for two years. They got my dad to hospice. They got my dad to hospice on a Wednesday. Watch this. And once he got in hospice, I kept saying, God, you can't take, like I was in total. Let's watch this. Total denial. He in hospice. We know what happened. They had already walked me through the whole thing. We had went through palliative care and they was telling me all about the different stages. And I'm half listening because I believe God. Watch this. So we get in hospice and my dad was kind of out of it at first. Then he started asking, where my baby at? Where my baby at? So I finally got there and the nurses began to tell me because I kept saying, well, when he get better, I'm going to take him home. And they were looking at me like, take him home. He don't leave. You don't leave hospice. Watch this. So I began to talk to my dad, talk to my dad. And then I started noticing, OK, they had to put, move him to they had to move him to morphine round the clock. Because the pain was so bad. What this is going to bless y'all this morning. So I started looking at my dad. And then Holy Spirit started dealing with me. Ask him what he want. And I couldn't do it because I was scared that he was going to say he was ready to go. So Holy Spirit said, ask him what he want. I couldn't do it for a minute. We on about day four. Because remember, they said he was going to be gone in two days after we got there. We on day four. So by day five, I asked the nurse. They asked me, they said, you've been here every single day with your dad. What do you want? Do you need a break? I said, I don't need no break. I don't need to go home. I got my, I brought my clothes, got my shirt. I moved in hospice. Watch this. I moved in hospice with him. <laughs> I moved in hospice with him. So by this time, they tell me, they said, what do you want? So I said, many of y'all know this story, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to get there. Um, they said, what do you want? I said, I want to hold him. And they said, you want to hold him? I said, yes. They said, okay, we'll slide him over so you can get in bed with him. Watch this. So I got in bed with my dad and I asked the nurse, I said, can you position me where I'm actually holding him? So I was literally holding my dad in my arms and I began to just rock and pray, rock and pray. And I said, dad, you know how you praying out loud, but you're not expecting that he's so, they got him on so much morphine. He just like pretty much out of it, out of it. So I was rocking and I praying. I said, dad, what do you want? He said, baby, I'm tired. Listen, he said, baby, I'm tired. And the tears, I could not stop the tears that day. And I said, God, I can't. I said, I can't let him go. This, this right here, this this my boy, this my dude right here. This little aggravating man is my dude. Y'all have to understand our relationship to get what I'm saying. And, and so I began to cry and I began to weep. And then God, let's watch. I don't know who this is for this morning. But Holy Spirit began to say, he is tired. He's ready to go. You are very selfish. Watch this. You are very selfish to ask him to remain here in the pain that he in. Or oh God. <laughs> Watch this. You are very selfish to ask him to remain here in the pain that he's in. God began to tell me, he said, so daughter, because this is how he deal with me. He said, so daughter, so why you want him here? Listen. I said, because I love my daddy and, and I just got to have him here. I just don't want him to go. And, and God said, so that's selfish. Because not one time did you say anything about him. You said everything about you and what you want. You want him here. So it'll make you feel good. So your daddy still be here because you, you, you his baby girl. That's why you want him here. But what did he say he was? I said, God, he said he's tired. He said, okay. Watch this. So then I begin to walk through how to release him. Watch this. And so God began to tell me, he says, daughter, I got you even in this. Listen. So I knew at that point, oh God, I knew at that point, he was tired. He was ready to go. I knew at that point, I got to let him go. I knew at that point that God was going to be in this thing with me. Watch this. God walked me all the way through. Before my, I said, God, this is, I said, okay, God, if you got to take him, if he got to come back to you, I said, because I know you own, and God began to tell me, he said, I gave you this time back because me and my daddy lived in the same city for all my life. 
but I did not have that relationship with him until I went to the hospital. My cousin called me and said, we're taking your dad to the hospital. He don't feel good out the blue. Hadn't seen my dad in months and months. Ended up at the hospital for those last two years. We were inseparable. Watch this. God gave me, he redeemed the time with us. He gave me all that time back. And I said, God, I got one last request. Don't let him leave here. Watch this. Don't let him leave here. And I'm not in this room. Watch this. God began. So the day that my dad left and oh, re remember he was going to leave in two days. Mm -mm. My daddy being who he is, he left about a week later. So the, on, on the next Wednesday, 730 in the morning, my daddy cleared his throat <clears throat> to get my attention woke me up i walked to the side of his bed and i our greeting every morning was god you got um good morning dad good morning dad i love you i love you and he opened his eyes and he looked at me and shook his head and smiled and closed his eyes and was gone <laughs> god see god granted my last request but let me tell you something angel this is gonna bless you god strengthened me so much through his death got up preached his funeral done all that didn't even break down watch this didn't break down to about two days after the funeral because I came home and I looked and all his stuff was on my bed. Like I left it the day he went in hospice because I never can't went back home. Watch this. So God began to show me through my daddy's death. Oh, God, he strengthened me. Oh, he woke up the real preacher then because I've always preached, but I didn't have that type of anointing until I got up and preached his funeral. Do you not understand? God gave me so much peace. Listen, God gave me so much strength through my daddy leaving here. To, I couldn't even wrap my mind around it. I couldn't even explain that. Watch this. And, 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 and God began to say, because you released him back to me. You were not stubborn to hold on to him. Watch this. Because what, I, what God started showing me, he said, if you hold on to him, you're saying, I want you to stay here and suffer so I feel good. Oh, Lordy. I want you to stay here and suffer, dad, so I feel good. So I won't have to bury you. God told me, he says, even though this right here is the hardest thing that you may have to do. He says, I'm going to strengthen you in the time of your lowest. I'm going to, I don't know who this is for. I'm going to strengthen you when they transition. I'm going to give you a peace that's going to pass all understanding. God says, because why? You asked me for it. I told God, if you're going to take him, you better, you got to strengthen me. You got to strengthen me. You got to strengthen me to stand. Not only did he strengthen me to stand, he strengthened my walk. He strengthened my trust. He strengthened, oh Lordy, he strengthened everything about me through my daddy's death. Oh God. And watch this. You all know how, y'all know how I tell the story because I dream a lot. I have these open eye visions. My dad has, I have seen him, literally seen him several times since he's been gone. Every time he came back, he said, I'm proud of you, baby girl. Do that, baby girl. And I can feel, I, okay, I, I ain't going to get there. I, I'm not going to go there this morning. Why, let, let me get to this because we already 20 minutes in and I ain't even touched the scripture. But if that bless you, just say that bless me. That bless me. That was for me. That was for me. Because God, listen, because God, I don't know why I'm on this this morning. But God always tell me, he said, everybody in your life, he said, I'm lending them to you. They don't belong to you. Oh God, they don't belong to you. They mine. <laughs> I got them in your life for a season and a reason. Oh, God, listen, even with your children, he's I have them in your life for a season and a reason. I'm trusting you with them. Oh, God. Those of us that have children, he says, I'm trusting him, trusting you with them. Are you? Listen, when you're pregnant, most mothers, when you're pregnant, you pray over your baby. You want them to be this and you want them to be that. And God said, and I heard your request. He says, and you raise them up and they go the other way. <laughs> he said, but you can never forget what you prayed. Oh, God, he said, you can never forget what you prayed. You can never forget what you asked me for. He said, because I don't forget. Oh, Lordy. He says, I don't forget. He says, that's why, you know, back in the day, they used to have babies and they would dedicate them back to the Lord. That's what that purpose was for. Watch this. So God began to tell me, he says, you raise them up in the way they should go. When they are old, they won't depart from it. Watch this. So God began to tell me, he says, you raise all four of them up in the way that they should go. They will not depart. Watch this. So God began to tell me when they were little, because my girls, all of them dream dreams. And oh my God, don't get Whitney started. She can, I could put her on this live. She'll go down the line prophesying to all y'all. Like it's nobody's business. Watch this. God began to tell me, he said, your housing prophets. Uh-oh. They all have the prophetic in them. 
What you going to do with it? How you going to nurture it? How you going to cultivate it? So what I told them, and they get upset when I talk about this, I say all my journals, because I, I have journal after journal after journal. After, I say, when I leave here, I said, because, and I always have to tell them when I have this conversation, I have to preface it by saying, I'm not leaving here until my assignment in the earth is done. Watch this. I said, your grandma, your, your great grandma, she was 98. Your great, great grandma, she was 100. I got a little time on me. So I told them, I said, I said, when I leave here, all my journals, split them up. I said, I want y'all to read everything in them. They're going to keep you. I said, all my prayer shawls, split them up. I say, they're going to bless y'all when I leave here. I'm leaving. A, what are you leaving for your children? If you, if God has revealed to you who they are, are you calling them back? Are you seeing them as that? Or are you seeing them as what they are in this world? Are you seeing them as the wayward child? Are you seeing them as you still smoking that weed? Are you seeing, or do you see them like God showed you when they were in your womb? Okay, let me get to the scripture. That has nothing to do, but I hope it blessed you. Let, 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 let me go. Let me go. Let me go. We on day 18. Day 18. Oh, Lord, I'm way over my time. Day 18, Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Watch this. Matthew 7, 7 through 11. I don't care if your child got ADHD. <laughs> I don't care if they got ADHD, a 504 plan, teachers saying they cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, teachers saying they need Ritalin. Watch this. Because I'm dealing with this with one of my students. And I told the, I told the parent, I said, can you give me a little bit of time? Oh, God. I said, give me time to work. Don't put them on medication yet. Don't do nothing yet. I said, give me time to work with them. Because when, because I, as a teacher, this is why y'all got to be careful who teach y'all kids. As a teacher, when I meet them at open house, I'm like, God, give me revelation. God, give me the gift to teach them. God, give me the, give me the revelation and the wisdom in how to reach every one of these kids in the place that they in and bring them up. Because all you're going to get, all I'm, all I'm seeking right now is growth. All I'm seeking is you leave better than you came. All I'm seeking is I tap into a ram where they never forget that teacher called Dr. Three. <laughs> oh, God. So, so, so I, I, I tell them, give me and God a little time to work. Don't, don't, don't put them on the medication yet. So that I don't know who this is for, but they're trying to diagnose your child. God says you need to get some oil. Call them as he called them. Oh, call them as the tongue of the learned. Mm. Call them as full of wisdom. Call them as son of thunder. Call them as daughters of Zion. Your young men shall dream dreams. Your daughter shall pro call them as that. Not as you bad. You act like your daddy. You act like your mama. Get that oil and put it to work. Okay, let me get on this. Matthew 7, Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11. Ask and it will be given to you. Listen to this. And you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. For everyone who acts receives. Oh, uh oh. For everyone mm, who acts receives. And he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Oh, Lordy. Okay, Thomas. Okay, Thomas. I'll be praying for him. I see the names coming. Yes, Lord. Um, It says, for everyone who acts and he who seeks will seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be open. Or, or what man is there among you who, if his son acts with bread, will give him a stone? Oh, Lordy. Who among you? Is it anybody on my timeline? If your child is 34 of y'all on here, if your child come to you and say they hungry, that you're going to give them a stone instead of bread. Listen, he said, who going to do that? Or if he asks for a fish, you're going to give him a snake. Listen, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more do you think the father in heaven would give good things to those who ask him? Oh, God. If you give good things, listen, there is pretty much nothing. Watch this. There's pretty much no, absolutely nothing that my baby girls, well, all four of them, but the two that's here with me, Christian and Crystal can ask me for that I won't get them. And they know this, but they don't ask for a lot. They just not, my kids just not because they all work hard. They, they get their own, but there is nothing that they can ask me for that they know, oh, mama going to make it happen. I'm a human. I am not God. So what do you think? Oh, Lordy, what do you think your kids, what do you think your father in heaven is going to do for you and you his child? He said, you think you give your, your child good gifts. That's nothing compared to what I do. <laughs> he 
He says, there's nothing compared to what I will do for you. But you got to knock, you got to see, you got to ask. Mm. You got it, Shakita. Ask, seek, knock. Ask, seek, knock. He said, that's what you got to do in order for me to do what I need to do. Watch this. It says, ask, seek, knock. When we see a progressive, because it's telling you to do three things back to back. You got it, James. It's asking you to do three things back to back. That's showing how intense it is. That's showing you, Deborah. He's saying, do it, do it, do it. Watch this. He's saying, ask me, seek me, then knock. Watch this. Jesus told us to have that intensity. Watch this. He said, I need you, Sheree, to have that intensity, that passion, and that persistence in prayer. Ask, seek, knock. Watch this. He says, because it, it is a threefold prayer description. Oh, God, like, this is good this morning. This is threefold. Watch it, Angel, this is going to bless you. Prayer is like asking in that we simply make our requests known. That is why people are like, well, Dr. Three, when you praying, what do you? Oh, and, and, and when people ask me to pray, I'm like, what time you go to court? Who going to be in there? What's the judge name? Well, because when I go to ask God, I say, God, I need you to step in this courtroom at 1030 this morning. And I need you to throw your weight around. God, I need you to step in this in this operating room at 930. And I need you to direct the physician hand. The physician name is Dr. So-and-so. God, when he grabbed that scalpel, I get very specific in my prayers. I ask you, give me the name. Give me what time. I'm not being nosy, but that's just how I pray. Listen, when you ask, you got to be specific. Watch this. It says, it says, in that way, we simply make our request known to God and everyone who re who acts receives. Watch this. Receiving is the reward of asking. Mm, here we go. Prayer is like, so we talked about the asking. Prayer is like seeking. Watch this. Prayer is like seeking in that we search after God. Huh? What are you saying, Dr. Three? I'm specific in my prayer. But I seek because I go to the word or oh God. <laughs> I need to do a prayer clinic, but I go to the word and I find the word that lines up. OK, I find the word that lines up with my request. Oh, God, I seek his word out. Watch this. Why do you do that, Dr. Three? Because his word can't return to him boy. His word got accomplished in everything he sent it out to do. So when I say, God, you God, I need you to step in this courtroom this morning at 10 o'clock and I need you to remain there until the verdict is clear and God because you said in your word that the king's heart is in your hand so therefore I need the judge heart to be in your hand and I need you to turn it in my favor God because in the courtroom I need your favor you said you would give me in your word you said it you would give me favor with you and man put the word on it why? Because now his word can't return to him void. And, it, and it, because if it does, it will make him a liar. And God is not like man that he should lie. But his word shall accomplish whatever he sent it out to do. Send your word to the courtroom. <laughs> oh, God, I love you. I love you. Okay, let me, let me keep going. Then it says, prayer is like knocking. Here we go. Until the door is open. Listen to this. Until the door is open and we seek interest into the great heavenly palace of our great king, Entering through the open door. Oh, here we go with these doors again. Entering through the open door into his palace is the reward of knocking and the best reward of all. Watch this. I, I love this. You act with confidence and humility and you seek with care. That means I'm going through the word. I'm strategic to make sure that what I'm praying is aligned up with the word. Hmm. Oh, God. I'm going to back my request with the word. Oh, God. Oh, God, you got it, Penny. Drop in that chat. Send the word. Send the word. Send the word. So I back my request up with the word and not with earnestness and perseverance. Watch this. The idea of knocking. Oh, I love this one. Also implies that we sense resistance. Mm. Look, listen to this. After all, if the door were already open, if the door were already open, there would be no need to knock. <laughs> you knock on a door. To gain interest. Oh, Lordy. You knock on a door with faith that Dr. Three is at home. She's going to open the door because I can hear her in there. God says you're knocking on the door to the courtroom of heaven, knowing that he is on the other side. He is the righteous judge. Oh, God. 
I about jumped up and just left the screen. You're knocking on the door, knowing that he is on the other side, knowing that he will withhold no good thing from you, knowing that he got the judge hard in his hand, knowing that he has your answer on the other side. I knock with anticipation because I know my daddy home. <laughs> oh, God. I knock with anticipation because I know that he will answer. Listen to this. You don't knock on a door that's already open. Mm. If I already had the request that I'm praying for, there will be no need to knock. Tiffany, watch this. But because I don't have what I'm asking for, I knock on the door until he lets me in. Oh, God. Let, let, let me keep going. Then he says, and, and it acts and it will be given to you. God promises to answer anyone who diligently seeks him. Not just anybody. Are you diligently? Oh, God. Are you diligently seeking him? Do you have the word to back up what you're asking him for? Have you searched out the scriptures to back up what you're asking him for? Or are you just praying according to your flesh? Mm. Oh, God, I love you. Listen, he says, so because you're praying my word and because you have passion and because you're seeking me, I have to answer. Listen, God values persistence and passion when it comes to prayer. Because you, because that shows him that we care about what he feels. Mm. It shows that we care about the things he cares about. And when you show him that you care about what he care about, then he show you that I'm concerned about everything concerning you as well. <laughs> oh God, listen, listen, listen. Persistent prayer gives glory to God. Expresses that I am depending on you to come through, to answer this prayer. I'm dependent on you. And it aligns your heart with his. Because when you pray in his word, it's lining up. If I'm praying out my flesh and ain't no word there, God fix it. Fix what? What scripture are you backing that with? Okay, listen, listen. It says, it says, and he would give you whatever you ask him for. He says, is there, he said, would, he said, would you ask me for bread and I give you a stone? Would you ask me for fish and I give you a snake? He said, if you give your kids good things, what do you think I'm going to give you? Listen, he says, in comparison to even the best human parent, how much more is God a good and loving father? How much more says our Lord? And he does not say how much more, but he leaves that to our, to our meditation. So you figure it out. Who Lordy? He poses the question. Listen, Jackie, he poses the question. If you love your kids like that, and you giving them everything they ask for. And, and you doing all this for your kids. And I'm the king of king and lords of lords. I form, I form the earth. I know every hair on your head. I know what you're going to do. I know the beginning from the end. My pains are... What do you think I'm going to do? And he don't even give us an answer. He said, I'm going to let you figure that out. What did we talk about yesterday? Look back for a testimony. Ask me how much you think I love you. Oh, Lordy. He says, look back, Sheila, at everything I brought you through and see how much I love you. Tell me I'm not a better parent than you. <laughs> oh, God. He says, tell me I'm not a better parent than you. Oh, God. Oh, God. Listen, listen. He says, I would give you everything that you ask me for as long as you do it in the right way. He says, I want, he said, when you pray, you are lining this thing up with my word. He said, if you look back, you can see I've never lost a battle. He said, if you can look back, you'll see it all worked in your favor. He said, if you look back, you're going to see that everything lined up just like I said. He said, if you look back, you will see I will never leave nor forsake you. So why do you worry? Why do you fear? He says, all I need you to do is believe and trust in me. Oh God, oh God. Listen, listen, let us go ahead and pray. Father God, we lift you up and we magnify your name this morning. Oh, great God that you are. Dear God, we honor you for who you are in our lives. We honor you for being a good, good father, a good provider, a good way maker, a miracle worker. God, we thank you this morning for stepping into our praise. In your word, you said you, inhabits the, you inhabit the praises of your people. So we thank you, God, for stepping inside of our praise this morning, for stepping inside of our worship this morning, for getting in the situation situation with us, dear God, for getting in the fire with us, God, for turning everything around in our favor. God, we give you glory for that this morning. We give you glory for being the God of everything, the God over the sea, the God over the earth. We thank you for being in control, dear God. When we can't figure things out, you already know. When we can't 
um, even talk about it. You already know. Dear God, so we thank you this morning for stepping into every situation on this prayer line this morning. We thank you for all 36 of these viewers, dear God, for stepping into their situation and making ways out of no way, for turning things in their favor. We thank you for the God of turning, oh God, we thank you for the God of turning this morning, for turning it in our favor, for turning it for our good, for turning everything that the devil, that the devil meant. It won't work. It failed. We thank you, oh God, for being king of kings. For being Lord of Lord, for being the God that wins, for being the God that prevails, for being the God that keeps his promises. Oh, we thank you this morning for stepping in every situation. Those jobs, dear God, that we believe in you for. Dear God, we say this morning, I decree and declare, God, everyone that's searching for a job, not just a job, but their divine assignment. God, I decree and declare that you would turn the applications over, that you would turn it in their favor, that you would give them favor with the employers, favor with man, favor with you, dear God. I decree and declare, dear God, that you would give them the finances that they need so they will be the lender and not the borrower. They will be the head and not the tail. Dear God, I even decree and I declare on this morning that every every person that's on this prayer call, every 38 of them, dear God, that has a child, dear God, that you place a special anointing on that child. Give them the turn of the Lord, dear God. Give them wisdom and understanding. Make them the apple of their teacher's eye, dear God. Wake up the wisdom on the inside of them. Dear God, even with the children, dear God, everything that they have learned this year, dear God, bring it back to their remembrance, dear God. Let them be the head of the class, dear God. God. You said in your word to God that they would be the head and not the tail. They will be leaders and not followers. Dear God, I decree and declare this morning, dear God, that every person on this line that has court situations, dear God, we step into the Rabanshite. We step into the Bosita. We step into the courtrooms of heaven. And you are the righteous judge. You sitting on your throne this morning. And God, we decree and we decree and we declare that the judge's hand, it is in the judge's heart, dear God. It is in your hand and you are turning it in their favor. Dear God, do a supernatural thing. Dear God, and those that's going through, those family members that are transitioning, God, we speak peace. Peace to the family that they will release it if you say so. Peace to the one that's transitioning to know that it is okay, that it is well with their soul, God, that it is well with their soul. Dear God, right now in the name of Jesus, step in these situations, oh God, and do what you need to do. Dear God, step in these finances, oh God, and do what you need to do, dear God. You said men shall give unto our bosom. Dear God, you said you would bless us, press down, shaking together and running over, shall men give. So send the givers, God, send the seed sowers, God, to sow into every life that's on this prayer call this morning, dear God. Dear God, we thank you right now, because even if our children went wayward, we raised them in the way they should go. And we know your word is still there. And we know your word is still speaking. And we know the anointing that rests on their life. So we decree and declare greatness over our seed, which is our children. In the name of Jesus, God, and we thank you now. We give you glory for what you're doing. We give you glory for how you're going to move. We give you glory for how you're going to set free. We give you glory for how you're going to deliver. The God, the one that's on the prayer line now that needs to come all the way into you. God says, come, come, come. He that is hungry, let him come. He that is thirsty, let him come. You will drink, you will drink and never thirst again. I will feed you and you will never want again. Oh, bread of heaven, feed me until I want no more. He says, you're hungry and you're thirsty after me. He says, this morning I say, come. I say, come. How do I come, Dr. Three? Go in prayer. He says, I said, come. Go in prayer. Seek him as never before. Well, God, he says, seek me as never before. He says, knock. I'm going to answer the door. Oh, God. He says, knock. I'm ready to answer the door. He says, some of y'all just standing there, but you're not knocking. He says, knock. I'm ready to answer the door. I'm ready to give you breakthrough. I'm ready to give you deliverance. Listen, listen. God is more than able this morning. More than able to deliver. More than able to set you free. He says, seek me like never before. Seek me while I may be found. Oh, God. We, we almost done with the 21 days of prayer. He says, you still going to have to get up early. You still going to have to seek his face. He said, with or without Dr. Three, I have a requirement on you now. I have a requirement on you now. Listen, listen. Whatever you do, do not miss sold out. I was about to say worship and warfare. <laughs> do not miss 
sold out this Friday, seven o'clock PM. We start at seven sharp in about two hours. We're done. God already gave me a word. Well, I think he gave me a word. Some of the word for Friday, because you all know if you come, you see me, I flow in the prophetic. So God has already given me a word for his people. He says, come expecting, come ready. That's the, the on, on Friday, the, the, that is the 21st day of the fast. That is the last day of the fast. So we're going to be in there celebrating. We're going to be in there giving God the glory. We're going to praise God for coming through. We're going to praise God for showing up in courtrooms. We're going to praise God for showing up in hospital rooms. We're going to praise God. Oh, God. Oh, God. We're going to praise God. Come ready. Come expecting. Get your family members. If they sick, get them there. God has gave me a special anointing to pray for those that are sick and going through. Listen, if you think worship and warfare, just I'm not even going to go there. Just get there. Listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. There is nothing, absolutely nothing you can do about it. Get your seed in the ground. The information is on the screen. If somebody would drop it in the chat, I'll pin it. Get your seed in the ground. You're sowing into good ground. If you need somewhere to tithe, this is good, 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 good fertile soil. That's all I'm going to say. Good, good, good fertile soil. But listen, get to um, sold out on Friday night. Listen, God is going to move. God is going to move. He has already shifted us. He shifted us in. Um, he shifted us during what was it? he shifted us during sold uh, during worship and warfare. And I am ready. I am ready. I am excited. I, I am. Oh, my God. Just ready for the move of God. Just ready to be in the presence of the people of God. Come, come expecting. Come ready. Come, come thirsty. He said, I'm going to meet you there. Your divine appointment. Oh, God. Your divine appointment with God. Listen, I love you. There is nothing, absolutely nothing you can do about it. There is nothing you can do about it. And the reason why I'm telling y'all to get there early is because it's a smaller room than what we have for worship and warfare. So those of you that came to worship and warfare, this is it's, it's at a different hotel. It's at Holiday Inn. And I don't have a lot of seating there. So that's why I'm saying get there early or you'll be standing up. That's just the way it is. Listen, but you're going to be up the whole time anyway, so it probably really don't matter. But just get there early. <laughs> Listen, I love you. I love you. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Get your seed in the ground. Get your prayer requests in. Listen, listen. And also make it a good day on purpose. Make it a good day on purpose. I absolutely love you with the love of God. If you ever need me, reach out to me. I love you and have a great day.